G'day. Now the pressure's on today. We've been tasked as mobile developers in Oracle Mobile Cloud Service to define REST APIs for a new custom API. So we already know REST, we know RAML, and in this episode we're going to check out how to build out the REST interface of a custom API using the MCS user interface. Thanks for joining us. I'm Chris Muir from the Oracle Mobile Platform team. Alrighty, so in this episode our overall goal is to build a custom API for a doctor's surgery mobile app to support the day-to-day -day running of their clinic. Now, the API, amongst other functionality, needs to provide a list of doctors at the surgery, a list of doctors rostered at the surgery on a given date, a list of surgery rooms, and the details of a specific surgery room in terms of what equipment is available. Now, there might be many other functions we might want to support too, but for this episode, let's stick with these four functions, as these will demonstrate some common qualities of REST APIs for learning purposes. In order to support these requirements, we'll deliver four REST endpoints. First, a get returning the list of doctors at the URI path slash doctors. Second, a get returning the list of doctors rostered on at a given date by using a URL query parameter slash doctors question mark available equals and then maybe a date 2015-0723. Next, a get returning a list of surgery rooms via the URI path slash rooms. And finally, a nested get under the URI path rooms, which will set the rooms name as a parameter in the URI, such as slash room slash room name and return an equipment list and other room details that we require. Now, it just so happens, we've already created a RAML file to describe these APIs. Now, it's not 100% fleshed out, but it gives the basic structure we want to support. Now, we can see the doctor's resource, and that is optionally supports a URL query parameter called available of type string. And separately, we support another resource, rooms, and it has a nested resource that accepts room name as part of the URI parameter path. Great. So let's look now how we would use this RAML file in the MCS user interface to quickly define a custom API and its endpoints. I'm logging into the MCS user interface and navigating to the development option, then APIs, we'll create our brand new custom API. We'll call it Doctor Surgery API with the same API name and give it a description. At the bottom you can see here we have the opportunity to supply our RAML file. And when done, you will see a successfully uploaded message. From here, we press create and voila, we're done. Having created the custom API and moved to the custom API page, we can see that the custom API is split into two main tabs, that for designing the interface, which we're doing right now, and the other for defining the implementation in Node. For now, let's focus on the interface side and we'll look at Node in detail in the next set of episodes. In terms of designing the interface, the custom API is split into the following tabs. The general page is for basic details of our API, which were mostly just set during the previous dialog. Do take time to note the remote URL of the custom API for future use. That's what your mobile developers will access from the remote mobile applications when they start building that out. The endpoints tab is where we see our REST endpoints defined for the custom API which comes from our RAML file. Now we'll come back to this tab in a moment. The security tab is where we define who can access the APIs based on roles. As you can see here, your first option is either to say this API allows anonymous access or requires authenticated access with a specific role. Now you might notice that the doctor's resource is listed below and I can further define additional roles here. The purpose of this is when you have many different resource endpoints which need individually different roles, you can specify them against each endpoint or just define a global role for all the endpoints. Hmm, now you might notice that only one of our resources, doctors, is shown here. What happened to the resources rooms and the nested resources room name? Why aren't they shown for you too to apply security rules against? Well, basically, I missed defining the HTTP methods in the RAML file when you saw it earlier, so let's fix that. Returning to the endpoints tab, you can see the different resources, doctors, rooms, and the nested room name resource. And all of this came from the RAML file. Now this way of looking and working with your REST endpoints is through what we call the API Designer. Now, if you want to instead work with your RAML file, select the Edit button, top right, and now you can see your RAML file and you're free to edit this as you want. Behind the scenes, MCS stores the custom API endpoints from RAML regardless. So if you're using RAML files or using the API Designer, changes in the file will automatically be reflected in the API Designer and vice versa. Right. So my first problem here is for the rooms resource, I forgot to specify that it supports a get HTTP method, so I'll add that now. 
On saving, you'll see MCS make some adjustments for you to the RAML file, adding the protocol of the GET, HPS in this case. Now if we return to the API designer, how does this get reflected here? If we click on the methods link for the rooms resource, it's in the next screen you can see the GET, as well as options to build out the request parameters and query parameters and response payloads and status codes. Hmm, now actually, let's instead have a look at the doctor's resource. Here, if we drill down to the methods, we can also see the get we defined and for the request, the URL query parameter called available. Ah, and now I've just remembered we needed to support a different parameter to support querying doctors by their specialization. To do this, we select the add parameter button, define that we're using a query parameter over a HP header parameter, we give the parameter a name and description, we'll use specialization, a type of string, and we want to leave it optional. Oh, and we'll add an example of cardiologist. We now save this and switch back to the RAML file. We can see under the doctor's resource, the additional specialization query parameter. Again, you can see how the API designer and RAML file are kept in sync. Returning to the API designer, if we select the security tab, we can now see our rooms resource has been added. Hmm, but we're missing the nested room name resource, so we need to fix that too. In the endpoints tab, we can see the room name resource and it is indented under the room resource. If you want to create additional nested resources rather than selecting the new resource button at the top, which creates parent level resources, you can click the plus button against the parent resource you've already created so you can create a nested resource underneath it. Now you'll notice something special about the room name, that it's surrounded by ellipse brackets. This means the room name is a variable and will be supplied by the caller at runtime as part of the URI and we may expect something like a value like ECG room. Now like previous, we can drill down on the room name by the methods link and at the top of the next page we can see the room name URI parameter specified and in this case the URI parameter is required. Like other parameters, you can supply an example like the ECG room. Now as previous, the missing part here is that we need to say what method this resource supports. So we select add methods and select get in this case. The user interface then allows you to define further characteristics about the expected requests and responses. Now for the response, how about we define some possible outcomes such as 200 success, and then the payload return will be a media type of application JSON, and hey, we can even give an example payload like the following. Room name, ECG room, capacity, uh, one, and so on. Having saved these changes, if we now return to the security tab, we can see the nested room name resource listed. So it was the HTTP methods missing that stopped us from applying the security rules. But you know what? For this particular API, we just wanted to make it anonymous regardless. So in this case, I'll flip this option over and now we have no role requirements at all to call this API. To round off the facilities available to you at the API designer level, you remember from our previous video on RAML that RAML supports schemas, traits and resource types and you can use these in your endpoints too. As you can guess, you can load each of these here and then reference them from your endpoints, just like we saw in the previous RAML examples. Now before completing your work here, it's worth noting that the API provides a test facility too. If we click on the test button, we're presented with a list of all the endpoints we defined. If we click on one like, say, the doctor's resource, the user interface will inspect the metadata for the endpoint and automatically show you the parameters you need to supply. And in this case, we define the parameters available and specialization. So I'll enter cardiologist for specialization. You'll also notice the authentication options. First, we must select the mobile backend and version. A custom API is always executed in context of one of these, but we just haven't set the relationships up yet. So we arbitrarily select any mobile backend and version. If the API requires a specific role, we also would need to specify a mobile username and password here with the appropriate role. But as we saw earlier, with the relaxed security constraint on this API to allow anonymous access, we can skip entering the username and password. Next, we hit the test endpoint button, and as a result, we can see a request being raised to the API and a response of 200 with no body. Now, this is effectively a mock test, though it is a shame we can't see any real dummy payload. If we instead go down to the room name nest resource and enter the ECG room as a URI parameter, select the mobile backend and version and hit the test endpoint button, here we can see in the response not only a 200 success, but the dummy payload we defined as an example back in the endpoint. 
Overall, the test facility in the API designer allows you, the developer, to test your APIs as you build them, returning mock data. And once the API is exposed through an API, you can perform remote tests from mobile applications too, again, with this mock data. Oh, and this, of course, reminds me, the last thing we need to do to make this API available to the outside world is to find a mobile backend. And once done, select the API from the APIs tab. And voila, once again, you're done. I guess you might be looking for some more complexity in defining your custom API interfaces, but really that's it. With some skills and REST and optionally RAML and a little bit of experience with the MCS user interface and security model, you've got it covered. So stay tuned to watch the next videos where we'll start looking at the API implementation in Node. Thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoyed these videos. Hope I'll see you in those next videos very soon.